straight of a dedicated Christian. So we will pick up on verse 11 and hopefully until verse number 17 and we will continue to look at the traits of a dedicated Christian. So Romans chapter 1 verses 11 to 17, we will read this responsibly. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Altogether, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Father, once again, we ask for your wisdom your guidance that you will teach us today, O oh God. You will keep our hearts and our minds open for the principles and doctrines that we will learn, and you will give us enough grace, O oh God, so that these things will not only be kept in our hearts and mind, but eventually be applied, O oh God, in our lives. Help us, Lord, that everything that we do will bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. So... As I have said a while ago, we, we have uh, already studied the chap uh, Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. And there are so many truths that we have already learned from this. And uh, four traits of a dedicated Christian. Because in the Apostle Paul, we can see these uh, traits of one who is dedicated to God. Remember, he was a bond slave. Meaning to say, he chose to be. A slave of the Lord. It is not something that is forced to him, but it is something that he willingly decided to do for his life because looking back, looking at the present and looking ahead, he cannot see anything better than serving the Lord. Amen. So I hope and I pray that we will see the same thing, that there is nothing better than to be in the center of God's will. There is a saying that there is no success outside of God's will and there is no failure in the center of God's will. You may die in the center of God's will, it will always be a success. Amen. You may not have much money, but in the center of God's will, once you face the Lord Jesus Christ, you will hear his well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. So we can see here that a fifth trait of a dedicated Christian is the desire to be a blessing to other people, to encourage and to disciple other Christians. So in short, to be an encouragement to other people. That is one trait of a dedicated Christian. So we can see in verse 11, Paul says, For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end, ye may be established, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. So we can see here that Paul says, he long to see them. So the word long is the word uh, in, in Greek, epipoteo. It means an intense crave or yearning to show extreme fondness to the object of that longing. So there is that extreme desire that he reach Rome and see the Christians that are there. You need to understand that among all the churches that were established in the New Testament, those churches in Rome are established without if I may say, the blessing of an apostle. Paul had not reached this place before, 
but there are already churches in Rome. Amen. So we can see that the modern day practice of having to establish a church by the sending church, and if the sending church will not establish the mission, it's not going to be an independent Baptist church, it's not founded in the Word of God. Because we can see here, once you send out a missionary, or once you send out a member of the church, and he went to another place and preached the gospel, the people that he will be able to gather and do the work for the Lord is considered a church. Ganun ho yun. So we need to understand that. Baka sabihin, hindi, ko inorga- hindi namin inorganize yan, hindi pa church yan. No. When you send out a missionary, he has the authority to preach the gospel, he has the authority to baptize believers, and has the authority to do the ordinances of the church. Therefore, it is already a church. Amen. So there are two ordinances, baptism and the Lord's Supper. They said that you can baptize, but you cannot do Lord's Supper. Why? Why? You cannot separate the two ordinances God has given to the church. Amen. So when you gave the authority, that missionary or that person is carrying the authority in order to establish churches. Remember, Paul is the one who established these churches without the aid of the sending church. And we can see that the churches in Rome were established without the aid of the apostle Paul. That's why he said, I long to go there. I want to see you. I am so excited to see people or churches that were established even though they are Gentiles and I was not the one used by God to establish these particular churches. So there was this strong yearning or craving or desire for the Apostle Paul to be in Rome. So this is his his, uh, desire or his longing in life. Now, this word is the same word found in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 2. Yung, yung, yung yearning, yung longing. Can, can we look at that? 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 2. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Ayun yung epipoteo, yung desire. It means to say, a person who got saved will have what you call an intense craving an intense yearning or extreme fondness for the word of God. So listen, if you claim, listen to me, that you are saved and you do not read the word of God, think twice. Think twice. Why? Because the Bible says, as newborn babes desire, crave, yearn, long for the word of God. So why will you claim that you are saved if you do not like the word of God? If you do not read the Word of God, if you do not love the Word of God, if you do not study the Word of God, it is as if saying that you are a fish, but you are not in the water. So no Christian can survive without the Word of God, and no person can claim that he was saved by God if there is no love, if there is no desire, if there is no longing, if there is no yearning for the Word of God nadaya mo yung sarili mo kapag ka ganun. That is why the Word of God must be a great part of our life if we claim and we believe that we are saved. Kaya nga pag marami pa yung Facebook time mo kaysa sa Word of God, baka ano ka, uh, follower ka ng ano, Facebook. Pag namatay ka, pupunta ka sa langit ng Facebook. At ewan ko kung ano yung langit ng Facebook na yan. So there must be that longing for the Word of God. There must be that desire. You cannot go one day without reading the Word of God. You cannot survive one day without the Word of God being a part of your life. Even in the Old Testament, Joshua says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Yun yung save. He will have the word of God. He will long for the word of God. Why? There is no chance that we will grow without the word of God. Look at 2 Peter. Chapter 3, verse number 18. 
but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How can you grow without the Word of God? Amen. The Word of God is milk. And milk is a building block of our growth. The Word of God is honey. And honey is one of the building blocks in our growth. The Word of God is meat. And meat is something that we need in order for our body to grow. All of these things in the spiritual are in the Word of God. And the Bible says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out from the mouth of God. So how can a Christian grow? First, if you are a Christian, you desire the Word of God so that ye may grow thereby. And if you are not growing, it is your fault again. It is not the fault of God. It is not the fault of the Bible because everything that we need to know is already written in the Word of God. Amen? Search the Scripture. For in them ye think that ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. Anything that we need to know about the Lord Jesus Christ is already in the Bible. Amen? So desire. Paul says, I long to see you. Paul says, my heart's desire is to be with you. Almost every day, there is that longing in the heart of the Apostle Paul to go to Rome. Why? What is the purpose? He says, so that I can impart gift to you. He wanted to give them gifts. Hindi yung ano ha, hindi yung regalong ibibigay mamaya sa mga father ha. Hindi yun, hindi. amen? May regalo ba mga father mamaya? Surprise, surprise, okay. Excited na kami, excited na kami. He is going to impart to them gift. Now, this gift was not referring to what we call uh, salvation or the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because this gift, salvation and the gift of the Holy Spirit, can only come from God. And we cannot give that gift. It is only for God to give. I cannot give you salvation no matter how I wanted to. I cannot give you the uh, uh, gift of the Holy Spirit no matter if I wanted to. And even if I desire to, I cannot give myself this gift because this gift comes only from God and He's the only one who can give this. So what are the gifts that the Apostle Paul is talking about? He was referring to what we call spiritual benefits that will come from preaching and teaching the Word of God. That is the purpose of the Apostle Paul. He wants to go there. Why? Because as an apostle, as a uh, apostle to the Gentile or Gentiles, there is that desire in the heart of the Apostle Paul to put a seal on what uh, on the things that these Gentiles need to know and need to understand. Why? Remember, they were in Jerusalem. There was a great persecution. Because of that great persecution, they were scattered abroad. Most of them are Jews. Those that were scattered abroad. And these Jews preached everywhere they went. So, the most uh, likely scenario is that most of these house churches were established by a Jewish preacher. And thereby, it may be heavy on the law. You understand what I'm saying? They may be heavy when it comes to the law. Remember, even the apostles, they are confused regarding law and grace. That they wanted to uh, uh, give all the laws to the Gentiles. But in Romans chapter 14, they made the decision that not to burden the Gentiles with the law. Why? Because it was only given to the Jews and they were past that because salvation was already given to them by God. So Paul wanted to go there in order to correct if there are something wrong. In order to supply those that may be missing. He wanted to preach and to teach to them the word of God. That's why he says in verses 14 to 16, I am ready to preach to you that are at Rome also. So these are the gifts that Paul wanted to impart unto them. 
the preaching, the teaching of the word, the purpose is so that they may be established. Do, 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 do you see the word? Paul says that ye may be established. So there is a, a uh, something in the mind of the apostle Paul that maybe they are not yet established or rooted up in the word of God. There may be something lacking because Paul is the one who should be taking care of the Gentile churches. Or he, as I have said a while ago, is what we call the apostle to the Gentiles. So he wanted to give them the seal of his apostleship. So the benefits include a change in attitude and in action, maturing and in the knowledge of the Lord, so that they will be established by the grace of God. Establish means to set in concrete or strengthen. Yung word dito na establish, nang galing sa Greek word, na, uh, ang Greek word na isterizo, doon nang galing yung ating word na steroid. The word steroid is the one that strengthens your body. That's why you will see those uh, people with big, with big muscles, they use steroid. So this is that word that Paul used in the word establish so that Christians will become strengthened in the Lord. So meaning to say, if Paul will teach to them the word of God, then they will be established more in the word of God. Look at Luke chapter 9 verse 51. This is the same word used when the Lord Jesus Christ was determined to do what he was set out to accomplish in this world. And it came to pass, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly, is Terizo, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Nobody can stop the Lord Jesus Christ. Not even Satan can stop the Lord Jesus Christ. He steadfastly, it means to say, he is going to go all the way. It may be hard. It may be painful. It will cost his life. But nobody will stop him in the same word when the Apostle Paul says, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. Why? We need to be established. Why? There are so many false doctrines and false, teach false teachers in the world. If you are not established, then you are going to be like children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Biro mo, ito, ito. Papa, how can you believe that the followers of Kibuloy are even saved? Have you seen the latest proclamation of Kibuloy? He says, I'm going to make rice five pesos per kilo because I am the owner of the world. He said, I can do that because I am the owner of the earth. And my answer is, is knocking blade. But there is now a rival. There is a pastor, I do not know, maybe in Africa, who said that he went to hell and he already killed Satan. So there is no Satan anymore. He's dead. Because that pastor went to hell to kill Satan. Naalala ko tuloy yung mga Ilocano hindi tinanggap sa impyerno eh. Hindi ba alam ng Ilocano natanggap sa, hindi natanggap sa impyerno? Ano yung napunta sa impyerno na kaya satanas may sungay sabi ay pulutan man giyod. <laughs> Napagkamal ang papaitan. Kasi hindi ba may sungay mukhang kambing. O sabi niya Satan huwag nang papunta yung mga Ilocano rito baka ako gawing pulutan ng mga yan. Pero mo nagpunta raw sa impyerno pinatay si Satan. And sometimes we may laugh. But, if you are not established in the Word of God, the same thing will happen to us. How can you? Can you just imagine that there are Christians in the world, that there are Christians in the Philippines who believe that they need to give one month's salary as first fruits? I cannot understand why they can believe that if they will just study the Word of God. I cannot understand why there are Christians who believe that they cannot transfer that membership and that they need to send their tithes and offering to their uh, home church even though they are abroad for a long, long time and they believe it. Why? 
Because they are not established in the Word of God. So that's why it is very important that we will be established because if not, we are going to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine para kang nasa dagat kung saan yung alon doon ka pupunta kung anong iba-ibang pangaral uy kakaiba yun na maganda yun subukan ko nga no Paul says I wanted to go there I want to impart spiritual gift so that you are going to be established in the faith look at Luke 16 verse 26 that word established is very strong and this is what we need as Christians. Amen? So that's why, listen to me, we need to study the Word of God. It is so sad that many Christians are lazy in reading the Word of God. We give more time, as I have said, on other things than the Word of God. Wherein this is our only chance to become successful in life. Don't you know that the word success is mentioned only one time in the Bible and it is connected with the word of God. So no success without the word of God. So no matter what you do in your life, without the word of God, we can never be successful. Luke 16, verse number 26, And beside all this between us, and you, there is a great gulf fix. That is the word, esterizo. Something that is fixed. Something that you cannot negotiate. Something that you cannot move. If you are buying something and they say, fix price, wag ka nang tatawad. We Filipinos are so good in haggling that even though there is a, uh, a tag, fixed price, we will still try to haggle down the price. Something that is fixed is something that you cannot move. Something that you cannot remove. It will be there no matter what. That is what the Apostle Paul wanted for every Christian. To be fixed in the faith. To be fixed in the word of God. Hindi ito paniniwala mo ngayon bukas iba. Sa makalawa iba. Sa makatlo iba. Sa makaapat iba. Sa makalima iba. Iba iba. There must be what we called being established in the faith. This one, you cannot do anything about it. There is a, a great God fix so that they which would pass from thence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence because it is fixed. You cannot do anything about it. It will always be there. Look at Revelations chapter 3 verse number 2. The last time that this word was used. It says, Be watchful and strengthen. Isterizo. The things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. It means to say that we need to be strengthened in the word of God. And this is the desire of the Apostle Paul. So question, do you have a desire to be a blessing to others? Do you want to impart to them gifts that will establish them in the faith? Or I think a better question is this. Do you desire to be established in the faith? Because if you're not established in the faith, there is nothing that you can do to help other people be established in the faith. It must be us first before them. Look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. This is what we need to do. Colossians 2, 6 to 7, the Bible says, And... Ye have therefore received Christ, as ye have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord. So walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. How can you be rooted up and established? Because you have been taught. Amen. Naturuan ka. That's why, some Christians, I do not also understand 
the rational behind this kind of thinking. Well, pastor, I got saved in this church. Praise God. The Lord used that pastor in order to introduce salvation to me. Praise God. Thank God for him. But he is not teaching the whole counsel of God. He is not teaching the word of God diligently. Even though, pastor, I cannot leave the church because of my credit inside. Utang na loob. Sa kanya. Because of my gratitude. I cannot leave the church. I need to stay here as a show of gratitude. Ladies and gentlemen, talk to the pastor. Encourage the pastor to teach more, to study more of the word of God. If he will not do it and you will not grow, find the church wherein you will grow as a Christian. Why? Because one day you will face the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat and you will be rewarded accordingly if you will not if you do not know how to do what is right, you are not taught to do what is right, and you could not do it, then you are going to suffer loss at the judgment seat of Christ. Kasi tayo mga Pilipino, itong maganda at masamang ugali natin, ang tindi natin kumapit. Kahit hindi na tama. Araw-araw, pinaprank ka ng asawa mo. Hindi asawa ko to eh. Hindi ko to iiwan, hindi ko iiwalayan, hindi ako lalaban. Hindi ako mga ngatwiran. Araw-araw kang pina-flying kick. Eh, pastor, tinuturo mo ako makipag-divorce. Wala akong sinabing divorce. Ang sabi ko, lumayo ka nang sa ganun ma-realize niya. Pero ang desire mo pa rin, mawin siya sa Panginoon o maging maayos kayo sa harapan ng Diyos. Amen? So, there are so many people lingering in a church wherein they are not growing anymore. You will die ignorant. Why? Because a follower can only rise up as the leader. Kung nakakita na kayo ng lalagyan na may takip, hindi mo malalagyan yung lalagyan na yon ng higit sa takip. Hanggang doon lang sa takip. Right? Just, uh, just through that, uh, up to that lead. So in order for you to grow more, you raise that lid and the container so that it can contain more. The same thing with us. If your leader is only up to here and is not willing to grow anymore, then help yourself to grow in God. Why? Because God's uh, desire is for us to grow in the grace and in the knowledge. Baka ang pinamemorize sa'yo, John 3.16, mamamatay ka na lang. Ano na memorize mong verse? John 3.16, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Biro mo yung parin ang alam mo. Malapit ka ng maputulan ng hininga. O hindi ka nag-grow. So it is your right to grow in the Lord. It must be your desire to grow in the Lord. If you need to turn your back on that church and find the church, that is willing to teach you, then go for it. Because you need to grow in the Lord. Hindi yung nostalgia ang pagiging kristyano. Hindi yung, anong tawag doon? Hindi sentimental value. Kung hindi fundamental value. Amen? That is what we need to do in our Christian life. So if you will make the goal of your life is to help other Christians grow and mature in the faith, then it will change your whole outlook and direction in your Christian life. Amen. Because you are going to spend your time helping other people and you will be more fulfilled because you know that there is something that you can offer to them. Don't you know that by encouraging other people, you yourself will be encouraged? Hindi ba, sabi mo, no, pag kami natulungan kang tao, meron nangangailangan, talagang legitimate yung pangangailangan niya, natulungan mo, hindi ba masasabi mo, ang gaan ng feeling. Hindi ba? Ang saya-saya. Why? Kasi nagiging blessing ka sa ibang tao. Subukan mo nakaperwisyo ka ng ibang tao, ang bigat ng pakiramdam. Para ka nagigilty. But if you help other people, 
then you yourself will be encouraged. That's why Paul says that we may be encouraged by the mutual faith that we have in the Lord. You see, when you go out of the country, you go back to the Philippines and you visit other churches and you will find churches of like faith, then it will encourage you. Pastor, I saw a church there. They do not practice first fruit. They were, they were not deceived. So there is that, that the feeling of encouragement. I, I was in the Philippines. I talked to several pastors about to introduce first fruits in their church. So we talk. I explain to them the word of God. And they say, thank God that we have this conversation. I'm not going to push through in teaching first fruits in our church. Now, by the grace of God, I know better. Amen? Di ba ang feeling? Akahapon lang, nagkukwento si Sister Jane. Eh, hindi niya pa na testify Sana may testify niya rin, pero unahan ko na siya. That she said that, to God be the glory, when I was in the Philippines, uh, most of my friends and relatives, they said, Shine, you, there, there is a, what we call a lot of changes in you, a lot of improvement. Because before, when we talk, we only talk about boys. But now we talk about same sex. No, no, we talk about the Word of God. And they said that, that uh, we are encouraged by what happened to you over there in Cambodia. So that is something that we will be encouraged about. Sabi nga ni Jen, you see, if you are here, listen, things that we are doing are normal because it is common in our church. But once you go out and go to other churches, that's the time that you will see that what we have here, by the grace of God, is something so very important. Just, just a simple case of our children sitting down here during worship service. And we, we try to keep them uh, silent. We, we, we try to keep them in order so that people will not be distracted from hearing the word of God. You go to other churches, you will see children playing, running around. And that is the time that you will appreciate what we are doing here by the grace of God. Because you see, Sometimes we do not put more premium in what the Word of God and discipline can do in our lives. We just do not put much premium on these things. But if we are going to go out of our way, then we will understand what we are doing is according to the will of God because it is our goal and desire in life to be a blessing to other people. Amen. Ilang church na napuntahan kong nag mc pa lang yung pastor. Natakbo na yung anak dito. Hinihila yung pantalon. Daddy, daddy, penging pera. Eh, doon ka. Tapos may, nagla- may nagbabarilan ng mga bata. O may, may mga kung ano-ano ginagawa. Here, we, we, we do everything that we could by the grace of God. So that we can make these children understand that in at their young age, that the church is something that they need to respect in their lives. That's why during break time, let them let them do what they want to do. But during service time, they need to follow and they need to behave in the church house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. Amen? And your memory verse among men natin sa kanilang uh, book. Memorize mo na, Brother Wilson. <laughs> Kakatawa. <laughs> Tataran tayo mga preacher, hindi na memorize. Si Brother Alex sa kanda, utal-utal. <laughs> That daw, hote, si May. <laughs> Dinaig pa sila ni Ponlu. Ponlu, you memorize uh, the, your memory verse. Come on, come on, you recite. Come on. Mm. Brother Idel, pakitahan mo nga si Ponlo. 
Ah, next time, next time, ah, next time. Ah. <laughs> Kasi kararating lang ni Brother Edel eh. So hindi niya pa na, <laughs> na-memorize. Ah. Ah, sino, sino, ba, sino ba yung mga nag... Brother mo, brother mo! Ah. Sakit ang ulo mo, no? Nireplay, no? Talaga. Ay, mga yan, nagkakasakit yan. Brother Jun, asan? Ba nakatakbo agad? Wala eh, talagang... Brother Gomer, Brother Gomer. Uh, pakita ang mga brad. Ah, oh, <laughs> Oh, talagang may sakit lahat ang mga tao <laughs> pagdating sa memory verse. So, it will encourage you, amen? It will impact your very life. If you know that you can help other people, it will raise the level of your enthusiasm. You will become more zealous in serving the Lord. You will be more zealous in, in uh, doing things so that you can help other people. Don't you notice that if you have a visitor in the church, you are very active. Don't you notice that? If you're a visitor, you will come early waiting for your visitor. But if we do not expect any visitor, we're waiting for you. Amen? If you have a visitor, then you are so behave in the church. Amen? Pakitan tao. If you have a visitor, then you are very active in opening your Bible. And sharing your Bible to your visitor. Right? If, if, if you're a visitor, you are eager to give. Showing your visitor that you are a, a generous Christian. And if you have a visitor, you're very prayerful that during the invitation, you're praying that your visitor will respond to the invitation of the Word of God. But if you do not have any visitor, then there is less enthusiasm in your life. So that is why, help yourself by being a blessing to other people. It will raise the level of your enthusiasm. Number two, it will readjust your focus and priorities. So instead of living for yourself, you will learn how to live for other people. Who can I help today? Because you're going to be blessed. You, 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 are, you are encouraged and you want to do those things that always encourages you. Amen? You do not want to do things that will discourage you, but those things that will encourage you. So if you are a blessing, you will continue to be a blessing. So your priorities will be focused in helping other people. And then it will help you remember that your life has an impact on other people. It, mean, it means that you are living a more fulfilled life. Because you matter. To other people, just imagine a family is about to break up and then God used you in order to mend the problems of that family and that family lived together for a long time happily because of that God used you to mend the life of this family. Will it not encourage you? You see, sometimes when I'm discouraged, I look back on the things that the Lord has given me a part in the life of other people. I remember Makoy. Michael Angelo Fernandez. Their family is a dysfunctional family. Uh, Go, Nomer, not Gomer, Nomer, and what's the name of the wife? The Gualo Larina. Ang mga pangalan eh. Gualo, Nomer and Gualo, husband and wife, with Makoy and Phoebe as their children. McCoy at an early age was already a drunkard. He is always drunk. Morning, noon, night time. It is almost always that he is always drunk. He is the lead singer of a group called Jehenna's Helm. Jehenna Impierno. He was the lead singer of that group. And his hair is down to here. Very long hair. Then, one day, Brother Danny Balduvino saw him, saw a group of young people in a them, and they ran. And Balduvino ran after them, and he was able to corner Makoy. And then he said, listen to me just five minutes. And he explained to him the word of God. Of course, Makoy is drunk. He couldn't understand. But he said, can you just come to the church on Sunday? And then... Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit, God works in mysterious ways. Amen? He went to the church that Sunday. But this is what happened. 
while he was there, I was teaching about why rock music is of the devil. And he stood up in the middle of the Sunday school and he said, Teka. I said, no, sit down. We talk in my, at my office, not here. So he sat down. And you cannot paint his face because of what he's hearing. But he sat there and listened anyway. And then comes preaching time. And he went to the office and we talk about it and I explain to him. And by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit works in his life. And then the following Sunday, he brought Phoebe with him, his sister. And Phoebe got saved. He, she professed to, to accept Jesus as her Savior. And then the next Sunday, he brought his mother, Sister Gualo. But they were not able to bring Brother Nomer. Because Nomer said, Makoy, it is only your trip. It is not true. Why? Because this is a situation in their house. Every midnight, McCoy will go out of the house, leaving the house open. No regard whatsoever for the safety of the family. Will go out, will drink, and will bring ladies or women in his room doing sin with them. And then if Brother Gomer will wake up at the middle of the night and see McCoy uh, doing those things, he will get angry and they will come to punching match. That is what's happening in that family. But McCoy got saved. Phoebe got saved. Gualo got saved. And he said, Pastor, help me that I may be able to lead my father to the Lord. By the way, his hair became short because of the working of the Holy Spirit in his life. And then I went to their house. Nomer will not go out and join us for Bible study. So what I will do is that we will position uh, in front of the door of their room and I will say, Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I will say, Lahat nagkasala, tayo rito. Kahit na ikaw na nakakarinig ng boses na ito, nagkasala ka rin. And then he opened the door. I will just sit here the same. I can hear everything that you're saying. So he, so he sat there, listened to the word of God, and after I do not know how many months, he attended the church. He got saved, and he became more faithful than the wife and the daughter. And he's the one who kept the family in the church by the grace of God. So when I look back, I can see a family who is about to be destroyed by the devil, who is as dysfunctional as it can be, but because of the word of God, because God used Danny, because God used me, because God used a Christian Bible Baptist Church of Santa Cruz, that family became a happy family. It encourages me to remember those things question, when you get discouraged, what do you remember? Hmm. Ah, pastor, pag nidi-discourage ako, naalala ko. Nakatisod na ako ng tatlo sa church. Ilang bagol mo? Huwag naman yun. What, what can you remember? Is your life having an impact in the lives of other people? Is your goal to be a blessing to other people? You see, it will help you remember your life as an impact on others and it will spur you to research more of the scripture because you are motivated to help those people who may have a question in life or regarding the word of God. Helping others will help you grow more and more in the grace of the Lord. Amen? So by helping other people, you do not realize that you are actually helping yourself grow in the Lord. That is the reason why Paul was able to grow more in God because he made his life and he dedicated his life to be a blessing to other people. Look at verse number 12. 
of Romans chapter 1. And we will end here. So we, at least we were able to finish two verses by the grace of God. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. You see, Paul is a Christian who will never be envious because of the success of others. He will be encouraged because he knew no matter what, he has a part in the churches that were established in that part of the world, even though he was not yet there. But he knew that he can do something by the grace of God once he reached Rome. But we know the story. When he went to Rome, he was beheaded. But it doesn't matter. What's important is that there is that longing in the heart of the Apostle Paul to be a blessing to other people. So before we end, do you have that longing in your heart? Meron ka bang longing na makatulong? Or nakaka-discourage ka lang ng ibang tao? Wag naman sana, amen? Because as Christians, we are designed to be a blessing. We are created unto good works. And then the Bible encourages us to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. So in whatever we do in life, let us see to it. Amen? That we are going to do good. We will be an encouragement and we are going to dedicate this life to be a blessing to other people. So we stand up, please. Father, we thank you for the lesson. That